today. The big headline is J.P. Morgan, the first financial to report, and did so with a thud. Joining me now uh, on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, Scott Redler. Uh, he's chief strategic officer at T3 Trading Group. He's here with us live on the floor this morning. I say it opened with a thud here because of this miss on profits. Do you still like J.P. Morgan after this morning? Yeah, I wouldn't say it was a thud. It just had, he still had some stress across the balance sheet, and it just wasn't enough to get everyone excited. As far as the banks, they've been a headwind for the past few years, and anytime you try and buy strength, you get frustrated. So, 33 percent profit decline on the quarter. Well, you know, the tough times out there right now, but they're, they're trying to strengthen their balance sheet and they're trying to work through it. And right now, the, the stock just went from 28 to about 33 yeah. ahead of earnings. So that's a nice increase. So I think if, if JP Morgan could pull back to the 30 area, that's a good entry for this stock for the longer term. Again, just had a decent move. Buying stocks after a move, especially bank stocks, has not been profitable. Now, you know, financials traditionally are a leadership group, but the models seem to be breaking of late, right? Yes. Do you have the same level of conviction about Goldman Sachs, about Morgan Stanley, and other financial names in the sector? I don't have a, a high-level conviction about any of them. And for the past two years, they've been just a headwind. They've been relatively weaker. And they haven't led the market for a while, but the market still can make progress. So you have to really strategically buy the banks on weakness or avoid them. We're hoping for that to change. We're hoping for the complexion to change, because then we would probably see some follow-through to the upside in the indices versus just trading from the bottom end of the range to the upper end of the range like we did yesterday. So what I want to see is I want to see, can the XLF hold higher? We just had a move in, the, in that ETF from about 1150 to above 1250. So if the XLF could hold 12, 1225 and make a higher low and then start to make some traction in the coming weeks, you'll see a little bit more support to the financials, which would then give better support to the overall indices as we move forward. And yet, fundamentally, we haven't seen a lot of change as yet when it comes to the big overhang, Europe. Right. So why do you believe that we will march forward? As far as the I watch the technicals of the market, and I, I read the headlines like everyone else. And if you just focus on the headlines, you wouldn't have been involved in this 11 to 12 percent move in the overall indices because you've had some strength in tech right. that's been leading the market. Retail has been leading the market. There are pockets where you can make money if you try and time them. So at this point, I still think you need some more time to work through the headlines. You know, we all are hearing about the plan, about the plan in Europe, and there's been a better tone, like they're trying to get it together. But I think that you just can't look at the headlines and say, I'm staying away from the market, because what I think just happened is people realized you could actually make money in the market if you watch it, because 11, 12 percent in seven days, that's something, you know, if you right. strategize, you can catch that. Some would say that. that's because the shorts were overdone in some ways, that, that that's basically what squeezed us up a bit, rather well, it, than it was a formula. When we broke through 1100 and came back above, shorts got squeezed. When we went to about 1150, at that particular point, you saw some dip buyers come in, and that's what drove us to about 1220. Now I want to see the market hold higher. I think if we could hold the 50-day moving average, which we broke above early this week, around 1175 in the S&P, and then turn higher again, that'll show us that this commitment to this move, it's more than just a short covering rally, and we could potentially see 1250 to 1300. But we want to see these retracement levels hold. And we've been seeing that over the course of the past week or so. But lastly, you mentioned tech there, Google. You like it and you think there's a stock split ahead. I would like a stock split ahead. The stock has made no traction for two years. It's been in a range from 450 to 650. Last quarter, awesome quarter, gapped up above 600. But then no one felt really comfortable building on their positions. And we're back down to about 550. I think this quarter is going to be strong. I think we're seeing the, the switch from tablet search, mobile search. They're in the right spot. Yahoo's been a non-factor. Bing's a non-factor. I think that they're going to have a strong quarter. I might take a, a little bit of an option strategy long into it. I yeah. think investors could stay there. But if they want to see their stock go, they announce a 4-for-1 soft split, and they'll have a $1,000 number by year end. Well,